Okay, back in the home folder, and now I'm going to move into a folder I have set up. Uh, I already have Apache installed. So this video is for a friend of mine who asked in regards to how to make a basic uh, interface uh, for running commands on a server using, uh, you know, through a, a GUI web interface. And uh, I've done this a lot in tutorials. Uh, but I figured I'd show a few simple ways to do it. These aren't the only ways to do it, obviously. But I'm going to show you how to run certain scripts uh, using Apache and the, just a basic Apache. Uh, if you were to install a LAMP, so a Linux Apache, uh, we're not actually using any of the MySQL stuff, but PHP. So basically, I'm running Linux machine. I'm going to have Apache and PHP. So just install those from the repositories, and um, and you're good to go. So the way doing this though, you're going to be limited on some of the things you can do. You can run scripts very easily. Uh, I'm just going to call you system commands using PHP, but you can call scripts that way as well. Um, but you're limited to what permissions because you're using the web user permissions because on your machine, you're going to have uh, different users that you may not be like actual users, but like groups. And then uh, and what you have is you have your www dash uh, data, which is what your web server is running on when you start up your Apache host. So it's very limited on what it could do. Um, so if you wanted to do things beyond that, like if you wanted to like play sounds on the computer or access certain things, uh, Apache by default won't be able to do that. Uh, you'd have to change permissions on that. And so I'm not even going to get into that, but I'm going to show you the basics on just a default Apache install. And then of course we'll look at BusyBox. Uh, as another example, which is very simple to do as well. Uh, but just remember when you're running uh, with elevator permissions, whatever they are, uh, even just a regular user, you want to be careful about who has access to that interface, obviously. Okay, so again, here we are. Let me go ahead and open up my web browser and I'm going to go to my local host and we're actually looking. So here's my web browser and it's looking at this same directory here. So if I was to create a file, I'll just create a file here. I'll call it um, ls.ph, uh, PHP. And now I have an empty file. If I refresh my web browser over here, you're gonna see that I have that file. If I click on it, nothing happens because there's nothing in that file. Uh, so if I go into that file, list.php, and I just have to start off by creating my PHP tags. So this is just saying, you know, everything inside these tags is PHP code. So you have to know PHP, but we're looking at running other scripts. So so my friend's looking at wanting to run Node.js scripts, uh, but I'm also gonna show you, I'm gonna show you start first off just running a basic system command. So I'm gonna say system, and then parentheses here, you gotta end the line with a semicolon, and in quotations, I'm just gonna say ls, which should list out the files in this directory, which currently there's only one. Right away now, if I click on this file, it's going to list the files in this directory. And actually, I'll just create a bunch of empty files. One, two, three. Uh, I'll call this one dot txt. If I run it again, you'll see those will now show up. Now, I didn't give it any formatting. If we look at the source code for our web page here, so I hit Control U, you'll see that each thing's on a new line. But uh, but a HTML, which is what this thinks this is, uh, doesn't see those new lines. You need to have uh, you know a line break. Uh, which we'll get to in a moment, but just wanted to show you that with a simple in PHP tags system and then whatever command you want to run, it will list those there. It will, it will run that command and the output of whatever that is. And if I ran that twice, I can say system and then uh, I can run it again or I can just say, should be able to say, well, let me do this again with permissions dash a if I refresh this now there you go so the uh, uname dash a gives you some information about your system the system the kernel you're running basically so it's going to list those files and that's gonna give me the output of the next command which is saying that I'm Linux uh, a Reml install it's a Debian install using Reml uh, and my systems called Reml my host name the processor I'm running that it's based on a Debian kernel blah 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 architecture all that stuff Okay, so we have that, and just to show you that's the same as if I ran that command here, okay? Now let's create a bash script real quick. So I'll just say uh, vim, and I'll just call this go.sh. Of course, we start off with our shebang line, and I'll just say echo, this is a test, and then I can say echo, 
another test. Now I can do that. Now if I go back to my directory here and I refresh so it can see all these files that we've created. We have the empty files here. We have the go.sh. Now if I click on that, it's not going to run. It's just going to show me what's in that file because uh, it's just seeing it as a plain text file and it's put in there. Even if I make it executable, like I'm going to have to, it's still, even if I refresh this, it's not going to run the script. It's going to show me the script. But if I go, if I create a file called go.php and in here I can create my PHP tags and I can say system and here I can say dot slash go dot sh. I can save that. Again, that does nothing to the go dot sh. I can run go dot sh here and it outputs that. But here it's just going to show me what's in that file. But if I go back out and refresh, you can see that I have this go dot php, which is executable since I have PHP enabled on my web server. I'm going to click that and you can see it prints those two lines, but again, it's printed on one line because there's no line breaks. If we look at the source code, you can see that it's two lines. If I wanted them to display on multiple lines, I can go in here or actually go into my shell script. And if I just add in BR, which is just some basic HTML for line breaks and refresh this, now they're on new lines there. And if I look at the source code, you can see the line break in there. So that's something to think about. Now, what about Node.js? Uh, so real quick, let's create a, we'll just call it app.js. And in here, I can just say, uh, you know, put in some basic JavaScript console log. Hello world. Now, if I try to dot slash that and do app.js, it's not going to work. It's going to tell me permission denied. I need to get, make it executable, okay? Uh, and that's still not going to work if I do dot app js because what's I didn't give it a shebang, and this is something I stress a lot. When you write a script uh, that you're going to be running in your shell, give it a shebang line. Some people are very bad about this because I could run this by typing in node and then app js. So I'm saying use node and run this script. And that works, as you can see. But if I want to dot slash the file, or if I want to copy this script to my, one of my paths to where it can run globally, uh, you don't want to have to type node whatever every single time. So if we go back into our script here, I can say, I can add a shebang line, which for node.js, uh, bin, not, not bin bash, uh, sorry, I want US, uh, USR um, environment, no, what am I doing? bin environment node. So what this is saying is that when I go to run this, what's happening is my shell is going to look, is there a shebang line? If there isn't, it's going to try to run it as whatever shell we're in, whether it's bash or z shell. But if there is a shebang line, which is the first line in your code with the pound exclamation mark, it's going to look at what program you're telling it to run. Here we're saying, you know, look at this path and this is the environment. What environment are we running? Node. Okay, so it's telling it this is a to use node. So now I can still do node app JS if I spelt node right, and that would work fine. But I don't have to. I can say app JS like this dot slash because it's in this current directory and I'll run. And actually, if I was to copy this app dot JS to user local bin, I can put it in here if I want. Oh, sorry. I'll copy it there. So now I can say app.js anywhere. So I can I can go into let me open up another little um, here. I can just go into like my temp directory here, app.js, and I can run it because uh, I put it in a system path. So that's a little bonus uh, part of the tutorial there for you, uh, putting stuff in it. But I am going to remove that because I don't want that in there. Sudo remove user local bin app.js. Okay, so my point is make sure you use a shebang line. Got a little off course there, but now again, if I go back to my directory here, refresh, you can see app.js. No, it's not going to run. It's going to show me the file because as far as the web browser is concerned, this is a plain text file. So what do I do? I create myself a PHP file, app.php. PHP. It doesn't have to be the same name. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as it's .php. Uh, so, and for this, you don't need a shebang line. Whoops. 
because the, because Apache is going to be looking at the extension of .php. But I can say system, put it in here. Now, if it was still in my system path, I could just do app.js. But since it's in the current directory, we're going to do dot .slash, saying look in the current directory. Now, refresh over here and click app.js. Uh, or app.php and it ran that code. It ran the the uh, JavaScript code uh, on the server side, not on the client side. Again, if we look at the source code of this, it's just the output. And you can write stuff in any programming language on the server side and access it this way. You can do it, uh, I'm pretty sure even, even Visual Basic, you can write shell commands, but you can do C, C++, C Sharp, Perl, Python, um, uh, Bash, you know, uh, Node.js, it doesn't matter. If you can output text to a shell, you can use that programming language as a server-side script this way, again, with limited permissions in this particular instance. Now, my buddy, he wanted like a GUI interface to, to access this, and obviously that's not what we're doing, but what we can do here is very simply, I'll just make a, I'll just call this button.php, or yeah, since we're using PHP code, you can call this PHP or .html, because uh, I'm not, not going to actually be putting any PHP code into this file, just HTML. But real quick, just to keep it very simple, I'm just going to say button, and I'm going to say click me, and then I'm going to say button, and then I'm also going to put anchor tags here. That's what those are called, right? href equals and the reference that we're going to the link we're going to link to it will be our app.j or our app.php file so this again we have three files already uh, this is why if I'm actually writing it depends on what I'm doing whether I use Apache or something even smaller and simpler like uh, like busybox which I will get to in a moment but if I go back here now uh, and I refresh this, you can see I have my button.php. When I go here, hey, I got a simple button that says click me. When I click me, click it, it, it brings me to the PHP code, which runs my JavaScript code on, on the server side. All that's coming up in the web browser is the output of um, that script. That being said, let's make that a little, little nicer looking and add some client side JavaScript so that we don't have to refresh the page. We're actually just gonna grab the output from the server side. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go back to my button here and I'm just going to delete all that. And I'm just gonna use a template I have created. Um, let's see, can I do this? There we go, that's a little bit better now uh, since it's kind of a wide code. Okay, uh, and I don't need to go into, this is just, I, I'm loading jQuery and Bootstrap here. Uh, I'm gonna be using jQuery code and Bootstrap for the buttons here. Um, very, very simple though. So if I come back in here, I'm going to say, again, button, button, I'll say, click me. And if we go back and refresh this, you can see it looks like this. Uh, it actually, let me do this a little different. I'm going to go um, BT, use some of my shortcuts here. I'm going to create, there we go. This is what a button looks like in Bootstrap. I can write the code here. Again, you don't need to worry about this code. This is just aesthetics uh, and it's kind of off topic. But now if I refresh this, see we have a nice looking blue button that I've set to expand across the entire screen. I can add buffers around it or I can just cheat here and put a few line breaks. There we go, so it's not right at the top of the screen. Oh, I guess I can put the line breaks up here. There we go. So I just moved it down from the top of the screen a little bit. That button doesn't do anything yet though. So now I'm going to work on the client side. So this is something that's going to run in the web browser of the user, not on the server. So up here under uh, document ready, and again we're getting into um, stuff outside the scope of the main focus of this tutorial, but uh, let's go ahead and, and do it anyway. I'm going to say uh, dollar sign dot get and in here I'm going to give a URL I'm just going to say uh, app dot php comma and I'm going to get a function and the output I'm going to call data 
Okay. So what this is doing, this is saying inside our script tags here, document, look at the document, wait till it's ready, then run this function. What does this function do? Right now, it's going to do uh, an HTTP request. Basically, it's going to be just like I'm going to this right here, but it's going to do it in the background and grab the output of whatever that is and put it into a variable called data. So now down here, I'm just going to put in a very basic little, I don't know, I'll just call, I'll just put a div tag. How about that? Oh, and I don't, yeah, I'm going to change some of that in a moment. Sorry. Uh, let's give it an ID of output. And up here, we're going to say, when we grab that information, we're going to say, uh, output. So it says, find the output. So the pound symbol here means something with the ID of output. And we're just going to, we can either replace, I'll just say HTML, and we'll put in whatever data we get, which in this case would be hello world. Now, if I refresh the page now, I saved that, right? Okay, I must have typed something wrong. F12, let's bring up our console here. I'm missing this right here. Okay. Now, if I refresh this, there you go. We have a button here that doesn't do anything currently, and we have hello world, which actually grabbed from our the output of our uh, app PHP, which is just running our app.js. Um, but let's change this. So now we're going to say uh, here, our button, let's give our button an ID. Uh, we could just tell it when a button is clicked, but we want a specific button because we might have more than one button. We'll just call this JS button. So up here, we're going to say pound uh, JS button dot click. Is it click or clicked? I think it's click. Function. And then what function are we going to run? We're actually going to put uh, this stuff inside this function. Really, I would normally write a separate function for this. But now, if I've done everything properly, when I click this button, it says hello world there, which is not just printing hello world. It's actually grabbing uh, the output of whatever command we're running. So, for example, if I go back in here and I go app.js, I can change this to say hello world. I can say a line break. This is a test line break. Actually, let's do another uh, little code here, line, and I'll say line break. Hey, hey, hey. How about that? Okay. So now we've changed our JavaScript code. I don't even have to refresh the page on here. If I click this button, it runs that script again and puts the output there, replaces it. You can also append it if you want to see the ongoing output. So uh, I hope that last part uh, didn't get too complicated for you. It's basically rather than just having a plain HTML button, which is kind of ugly, that redirects you to the code and runs it, we're actually going to have a little bit something nicer looking with Bootstrap and use some jQuery, which I, I understand you don't have to use Bootstrap or jQuery. You could just use some CSS and JavaScript Ajax, but I like using jQuery and I like Bootstrap and I have my simple template made up. Um, uh, so overlook all that because uh, that's just taking it a step further. Let's look at a, another option for this, and that is uh, running a different web server, something small like BusyBox, which you will find on almost everything, routers, phones, uh, but also desktop computers. Um, so if I say BusyBox HTTPD, and I'm going to say dash FV P7777. What I'm saying here is, okay, we're going to use BusyBox. We're going to start BusyBox's HTTP service. It's its, it's, it's name in there. Uh, dash F means force. It means don't throw it in the background for right now, at least while we're testing. And V is for verbose, so it should show us uh, what's happening every time something's clicked on the web server. And P is just telling it to use port 7777, because I know if you don't give it a port, it's going to use port 80 by default, which I already have Apache running on. I just know 7777 is not being used on my computer. Uh, and it's going to use the current directory if I don't tell it to use <clears throat> anything else. So I click that. Now if I come down here and go localhost or type in my IP address, seven, colon 7777, it's going to tell me 
file not found because there is no file for it to display because we didn't give it a, a file name uh, or and there's not an index file. So I can come back up here and hit control C to kill that. Uh, what I want to do though, by default, uh, BusyBox will allow you to create a CGI bin and you can do this with Apache too, but BusyBox is very small and lightweight and if you're actually trying to make an application rather than just a web face, BusyBox is a good way to go, but again remember the whole permissions thing. Um, we're going to create a directory called CGI-bin and if I move into that directory and let me let me quickly just copy my go.sh file to here. So now I should, in theory, be able to go to cgi-bin forward slash go.sh and it will run that script. Um, oh, I have to start my server up again. And I'll refresh this. And it's telling me uh, file not found. Oh, okay. I messed up. I'm in the CGI bin still. I should move out of that because it's looking for a CGI bin within your home directory of your web server, your root directory of your home server directory. Anyway, gonna run that. Hope I'm not getting too complicated for you. Trying to, trying to keep this simple. And it ran our script. It ran our script, but I didn't get anything output to my browser, but it did run that script. Uh, what it's doing is it's running that script, uh, but when you're running it like this, you need to have the script output a line saying that this is a HTML file or a plain text file or however you want the output to be displayed. So it's running, but we're not seeing the output. So I'm actually going to, for now, I'm just going to run it like this without the F and without the V. So it's running in the background now. So my web browser is still, my web server is still running, but I'm going to uh, open up that script and I'm actually going to delete all this and I'm just going to say, uh, what am I, what's my, there we go, my CGI script. So I'm going to forget about this, forget about all this, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So basically you just need to start your script off with this text right here. It's just telling the web browser that the content, content of this page is text, plain, or HTML if you want it to be HTML. Uh, and there's other options as well, depending on what you're doing, but for most of what you're going to be doing, it's going to be one of those two. And I'm going to say hello, or I don't think go. hello again world. Now, if I save that, I can refresh my web browser down here, and there you go, it says it right there. And uh, I actually have two new lines here. I don't think I need both those new lines. Let's see. Refresh. There we go. Okay. So what now? So now I can go back and I'm going to move my, um, what did I call it, button.php. I'm going to move my button.php to button.html because BusyBox, I haven't incorporated PHP into it, although you can run PHP through it using the CGI bin folder. Uh, but let's go to button.html here. So here it is. I'm going to click this button, nothing happens because it's looking for files. It's trying to run a PHP file, uh, but we don't have PHP installed, blah, blah, blah. Let's edit that code real quick, button.html. And we're going to change this. So before using it the other way, we had our user interface here in a PHP or HTML file that calls a PHP file that is just doing a system call. So we actually have three files. We don't need that anymore because we're using our CGI. So I'm going to go CGI. Uh, bin, and I'm just going to call that file directly, so I should be able to refresh this page, click this button, and there we go, hello again world. Uh, so now I can make multiple scripts. Uh, let's do vim uh, cgi bin, we'll call this go2.sh, uh, I did HS. It doesn't matter because it's not looking at file extensions. It should just be looking at uh, the shebang line again. So let me again uh, just run my little template here. The template's looking at grabbing variables that are sent to it. We're not worried about that right now. Uh, so I'm going to say echo hey, and I can run the command like uname a and uh, echo test 
Now, I should be able to go into my button directory now that I have this set, set up, the button HTML. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, copy this and go button JS2. But really, this is, I don't want to call it anymore because we're not calling JS anymore. We'll call this button 2. And uh, this could be cleaner because I have, I'm calling, I'm going to be re rewriting code. You should never have to duplicate code. But just for simplicity here, I'm going to copy all this. Y, M, M, P. So here I'm going to say for button 2, run that file. Oops. And put the output there. So now, if I refresh this page, I have two buttons. The first one will run go.sh and put the output to our little div tag here. Button two will run uh, go2.hs <laughs> and, oh, did I not make my script? I have to, uh, you have to make sure you make it executable. And we'll, we'll, we'll test it, so we'll say CGI bin go to .sh. So it runs good there. We don't have our line breaks in there, but let's go ahead. I don't have to even refresh my interface here. Boom. It puts it all right there. But again, if we want uh, those line breaks, we will vim this. And I can say uh, br there. And I can put br there and there. So now, Button one runs, runs one script, button two runs another script. Button one, button two, button one, button two, button one, button two. Uh, I can also go into this set button two script and add echo dollar sign random all capital. And that should give us a random number there at the end. And again, I don't have to refresh my page down here because I changed the server side. It's going to just call that script from the server again. Boom. Right, I did do that right. Echo random should give us a random number. And I did put that into the script here. And if I run that script, hmm, it's got to be something. Oh, you know what? Let's change this to bash. Uh, now let's run that script. Bingo. Uh, I had it running uh, through a different shell than bash. So now I can click this and now I'm not getting any output. Let's see, our console log doesn't give us any errors there. Network. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not really sure. Why I'm not getting any output there. Network, all this preview response, it's not giving me any output. But the, oh, maybe it has to do, that's really weird. Trying to think of why that makes a difference. Shouldn't I've used bash scripts before? I have bash installed. Even if I remove this. Hmm. Yeah, obviously it's trying to use the shell that's built into BusyBox, but it should be able to access bash as well. Anyway, not a huge deal. Um that's going to bother me. Anyway, uh, let's go in here and let's add something else. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, I mean, you can put any commands in here you want. And again, this is running as a user that you start BusyBox as, uh, which in this case is my user, which means it has access to all my files. So make sure you're securing things. Uh, you want to limit uh, user input as much as possible as far as uh, uh, allowing it to run scripts. It, it gets very, very tricky. Um, if, you, if you're allowing the user to insert text, 
you really, really want to strip and sanitize that, which I'm not going to get into because there's different ways to do that depending on what language you're using. PHP has some functions built in, but you can do things with other scripts, but it's like... Uh, um, if you're just doing button presses, you're pretty much, you know, that, that's, that's fairly secure. But if you're having any type of text input, you want to be very limiting on to what the user can input. And, uh, and don't just limit it on the client side. You want to limit it on the server side because anything on the client side can be modified by the client, obviously. Anywhere, button one, button two, button one, do, 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 Anyway. And, of course, I can uh, also move in, move my... Uh, Let's say copy app.js to our CGI bin. And let's just do our button here. And I'm just going to change the second button to instead of running our go to file, I'm going to have it run our app.js uh, file. So now, now I do have to refresh this page because I changed, made changes to the page. If I go do that, it's not going to work. And why is that? Well, Vim CGI. Let's go into our go.sh file and I'm going to copy this and then open up our app. This I should be able to just paste that. Okay. Uh, because you need to have this as your first line of text, so I'm going to want to change this to console.log, but give it that same text saying what ty type of content it is. So if you're doing a CGI script, you have to have that at the beginning. And again, you can have it as text. Or, or as HTML. Uh, so now that that's saved, now I can click this button. I should get the output. There we go. The, the Node.js is, is, is considerably slower. Watch, watch how I click this, boom, it's right away. And I click this, and it takes a second. And same, same as in the console here, CGI bin go uh, .sh, boom, it prints out right away. But if I do uh, that, it's like it's like it's like it's got to load up node where uh, you know your shell loads up pretty fast. It's it's already running and stuff. So uh, different different things to think about there. And these are just some options. Now you could also, if you're really going to go Node.js, you can use Node.js as your web server or as a socket server if you need you know constant real time streaming of data. Um, I don't use Node.js enough to know to really get into that. I've played around with socket stuff. So you can but you can use have your script be the server and the code that the server runs uh, if you are up for that. Uh, but it's definitely not as simple as just running busybox and adding your scripts to a CGI bin. Anyway, I feel like I overcomplicated this a bit, but those are your, your two main options, using Apache with the default setup. Because all you have to do is install Apache and PHP, and you're good to go. Just, you know, use PHP system call. You're good to go. Uh, and with, uh, if you start BusyBox, install BusyBox, start BusyBox HTTPD in this current folder, and any script that you make executable and put in your CGI bin of the root directory of your web server can now be called by these scripts. And again, don't let my uh, button.html code here uh, scare you. This is, you know, it's not very much. Uh, it's very basic uh, jQuery, JavaScript code, and, and Twitter bootstrap. But, again, let me just do uh, vim button2.html and in here I can just do, you know, button, again, Click me button and then put an anchor tag as a simple way to do this. And we can say CGI dash bin forward slash app dot JS. So again, now if I come here and I go to that file on my web server, right there, and again, that's the entire code for your user interface and click that and it runs that JS. Now you notice we have HTML tags in here and not being recognized. That's because we set it as plain text. If I vim CGI bin uh, app.js and I change this uh, instead of plain I say HTML and I refresh this 
Now it's displaying it as HTML. So that's the difference. If you're going to have HTML tags in there, you want to say that it's HTML. If it's going to be plain text, set it as plain text. Uh, but again, so right here, I can just click this, click me, boop. And that's as, that, that's as simple as it gets. So, I mean, a lot of the other stuff I showed you was just to make it look a little bit nicer. But again, it's this one line and putting your script in a CGI bin and adding that one line of content type. So that's it. That's all you. If you have a, a, a script already, you add this output as your first line, put it in a CGI bin and make sure it's executable, and your web browser can now run it. Again, running as the user you've started your web server as. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Showed you it. It's very simple. Made it a little more complicated in the middle there just to show you how you can make it look nice, but then I get reviewed again at the end on how simple it can be. So, that's it. Let's see.